Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today is a Stashing with Stephanie day where we come out with a brand new backwater friendly pattern that's been designed to and inspired by this month's fabric collection that we've shipped off to our members. Our members get 10 fat quarter bundles for $29.99 a month plus shipping, so about 25% off. And then they get an exclusive 25% off coupon and getting additional fabrics. They can get whatever they want, yardage, uh, whatever they want. But we also come up with a what's called a finishing kit, which contains the fat quarters they didn't receive, along with background and binding to turn their 10 piece bundle into a full quilt kit. So we can make this month's design. It's super fun. I'm really excited about it. It looks complicated, but it is almost entirely strip piece. So it goes pretty quick. More on that in just a second. And then they also get a free pattern that we designed to go with it and access to all of our previous Stashing with Stephanie patterns that are available on our website right now and 30% off, not one, but two of my Fat Quarter books. And so it's a great club to join, especially as we're going into the winter months, we're doing more things inside as the weather cools down. Sign up, have some fun, get some free patterns and some exclusive discounts. All right, let's take a peek at this month's collection. Now, if you join right now, you are not gonna get this collection. We have already mailed it out. So if you really like this quilt, we have quilt kits available for you while supplies last. And if you're a member, you can get finishing kits in order to turn your bundle into a full kit. Our next collection, if you join today before the end of the month, is going to be an Allison Glass collection, so I'm super excited about that. All right, let's take a peek at the fabric. This is called Bookish by Sharon Holland for Art Gallery Fabrics. Uh, you, I may not have talked about this before, uh, but my actual degree is in English, so I studied literature for four years of college and I'm trying very hard to foster the love of books in my daughter. So we read every single night. I always have audible books going and this has some classics on it. We've got Anna Green Gables, The Hobbit and some really fun ones on there. This book print one is just so cute. I feel like you could use scraps to make that happen uh, into an actual book. Uh, mark. This would make a good background if you are just using it, but we are using one of their basics. And then we've got some really pretty lights. This one is the only one that was not included in any bundle. This one you'll see, we're going to use it to kind of make a spine. So this month's pattern is called flyaway because I think it kind of looks like a feather, but also it kind of looks a little bit like a book uh, going along. And this is either the spine of your feather or your book, whichever you want to see. This one's really pretty. There's like a script in the background. So it looks like a little love letter in the background. And this one is called Favorite Sweater. I mean, it's getting to be fall time here. It's nothing better than putting your favorite cozy sweater on, snuggling up under a quilt and having a good read on a Saturday afternoon. Except maybe quilting and listening to an audiobook. I think that might be better. We'll see. This one's really cool. It looks like open books. Like it looks like here, like an open book. And these look like pages. It's so cool. But from a distance, it just looks like a fun geometric design. Of course, we've got some readers. Some more pretty pinks. This is one of my favorites. Oh, I love this. It's just like a book in a flower field. It's so pretty. And Art Gallery is one of those collections or one of those fabric manufacturers that does a great job with color. Like everything coordinates beautifully with this. And it's just very trendy right now too. I have like no less than five shirts that could match this mauvey pink right now. It's very popular in clothing, as well as obviously the teals. You can see I had no trouble finding a teal sweater to go with that. So it's really pretty. So check it out. It's called Bookish. And if you are a member of Stashin with Stephanie, you can save right away. Just sign up and then on your second transaction, you will automatically have 25% off anything in the Bookish line. You also have 25% off Grow, which was our collection last month. And so you can get kits, you can get yardage, you can get those free patterns, you can get the discount on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop and Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts, which are both doing really well on Amazon right now, but you can get signed copies from us. So check that out. It's a great club to be a part of. I have looked at other clubs and we by far send you the most stuff for the least price. Um, I looked at one that only sold, sent you six fat quarters for the same price. And we send you 10 plus a free pattern, plus access to dozens of other free patterns. 
exclusive discounts on more fabric and books that you can get back quarter ideas. It really is a fun, fun club to be a part of. So check that out, Stash with Stephanie. All right, let's get into today's pattern. All right, so I normally don't cover cutting in our tutorials, but I am today because there's a little bit special way that you're gonna to wanna to cut these to make sure that everything ends up in the correct position. So we've got our selvage edge, and that's the side we're gonna cut from because sometimes the selvage can be a little fat. This one is about an inch wide, and you need to have a specific amount of length in order to get the right amount from our strip piece units. So we always wanna cut from this side um, because we do not want to end up being short because we took too much off of this side. And we're gonna cut at an angle because we are doing offset strip piece units. It's really great because it has minimal fabric waste. It makes everything go super fast, but you have to be careful when you're cutting because in this case, we need our strips to form a V, which means I need to cut them uh, with the angle in different portions of my strip. So I'm gonna show you what that means here, but there are also diagrams and the pattern to go with this. So make sure you're looking at that when you're doing this. It's called Fly Away and you can get it on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, so for this top one, what's important here is this 45 degree line that's going right across. I'm gonna line that up with the top of my strip and I'm gonna scoot it down as far as I can before I'm hitting that selvage because we don't wanna use that. Now I'm gonna trim away this corner. All right, so now we've got one strip where the 45 degree angle is in the top left. Now for this one, we're gonna want it to be in the bottom left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna take that same 45 degree line, just this time I'm gonna line it up on the bottom. I'm still gonna move it over until I start to see that selvage. In this case, it's not the same big white section, but I am seeing those dots that are characteristic of the selvage edge. So I've got that 45 degree lined up with the bottom this time and I'm gonna go ahead and slice off that corner. All right, so now you can see I've got it going in two different ways. So when we start sewing these together, they are going to form a V once we join our rows. So it's really important that you split your pieces in half according to however many you need in the pattern instruction for the size you're making and that you cut them going the correct way or you are not gonna end up with enough. And there's pattern diagrams, you'll be fine. You can watch this part of the video, but we are always gonna to wanna to make sure that they are coming in and that you are then going to have a piece on top, which I will show you here. So we're gonna do that for both the fat quarter uh, strips and the backgrounds. So if we were to do this with regular strip piecing, both of our ends would start at the same place, we'd flip them over and then everything in this corner would be waste. So by taking that corner off, we're able to join them so that they're gonna be even going all the way up. And that way we're not gonna have any waste, we're just gonna be able to square up this edge just a smidge and we will have, we'll be able to get two of our strip set rows out of one of these sets and it's gonna be really fast, really simple. Now, it is a little tricky when you get started. I'm gonna show you how to avoid it though. And again, this is on your pattern, we illustrate it for you. All right, so if I were to just flip this right sides together and have my ends be even like this, it's not gonna to go together correctly. You're going to end up being offset. So you can see when I flip this up, we're not even. We've got quite a bit of offset there. So what you wanna do instead is make sure that your point is sticking out just a little bit. So where this little V is should be a quarter inch away from your edge. Now you can mark that if you want. I'll do it here just so you guys can have a good visual. I tend to eyeball it because I have done this a lot. So what I can do here, I can just line up that quarter inch mark with the edge and then I can take my friction gel pen, which is gonna go away with heat, and that gives me my quarter inch. So that tells me this dash mark here needs to meet where this is coming together. And then if I stitch right through here, we'll be able to, we'll be good. We'll be able to flip it over and have everything continue on in a nice straight line. Now, one thing that you will be able to see as you do this is if you have your needle set properly to sew a quarter inch stitch, 
your needle is also going to meet right where this little valley is. So that helps you be able to get away without marking it um, because you'll know that if it's hitting right there, then you've got it lined up right and you're good to go. All right, so I'm going to start strip piecing this and then we're going to be ready to start sewing our rows together. It's so, so fast. All right, so I'm just strip piecing the same way I would anything else. I kind of lift up my strips and align my edges and then I just hold my finger at the end. Now I don't have to pin anything. I can just kind of let it pull it, take it up. And then when I've gotten all the way up there, I'm gonna just repeat. It's important not to push your fabric. You wanna let the feed dogs bring it up. All right, one thing I wanna point out here is because we started with those offset strips, they're gonna end at different spots. This one here is about three to three and a half inches longer than this one over here. And depending on how thick your selvages were, you may have a little bit of variation between how far off these end as well. So don't panic, it's supposed to be like that. What I do is I just stitch all the way down and then I can just lift up my presser foot and slide another one right on through. Now I love to press my seams open. It makes for really great joints. So what I do to do that is I just put my need, or the nose of my iron right down the center of that seam. And then I keep three or four fingers pressing that seam open ahead of it. This kind of helps spread that out and make it really easy to get your iron down. Just make sure to stay a little bit ahead of it because you don't want to get your fingers. Now I also press all the way down along that seam line just so that it's a little bit easier to manage when we're making our big strip set units. All right, once I've got it all from that side, you should see a nice straight line here. You shouldn't see any wiggles. If you do see a wiggle in here somewhere, it means you pressed a pleat in and it's not gonna be the right size. So you're gonna wanna straighten that out or you move on to the next step. I also like to press from the front side to get it really good and flat. All right, now we're gonna sew these into sets of two. And you can see that our line is still going. So when we eventually turn this, it's gonna be a nice straight line and we can cut our diagonal rows straight off of there. It goes so fast. So what I wanna do, same process as before, just instead of having a tiny little strip set, we're turning the whole piece over. Again, we wanna make sure that our little valley that's created by our triangles here is about a quarter inch away from the edge we're gonna be sewing on and your needle should hit right in there. If you wanna mark it, feel free. Now when you're at this point and you're sewing your strip sets together, you'll notice there isn't that much of a difference between where our longer piece ends, our wider piece ends, and our skinnier piece. That's because there is less difference than it is when you're sewing the skinny piece to the big piece on that diagonal. I'm gonna go ahead and chain piece two more together so we've got enough for our strip piece to row. All right, so we're just gonna keep on assembling these until we have the correct amount. You're gonna sew together sets of three and sets of four. Your pattern will tell you how many. If you're doing the crib, you're only sewing together sets of four. So just make sure you're paying attention. You're gonna want equal numbers going with the at angle in the bottom left and equal amounts with the angle in the top left. So just pay attention. It's all laid out there for you. There's graphics showing you what to do. We'll hold your hand, we'll make sure you get this right. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys and sew them right sides together. I'm gonna show you how to cut this up and it looks so cool for so little effort. So it's really good. Let's check it out. Now when you get to this point, you really wanna be lifting and pressing because we have a lot of seams here. We don't wanna press anything going the opposite direction. So you don't just wanna slide that iron straight across anymore. We're going to use our six by 24 inch ruler next to cut this and what's important is that we pay attention to the 45 degree line and it should be going out from both directions. So it should be pretty easy to cut whether your strip is going from one side or the other. So what I'm gonna do is I need to line this up so I can get all the way from the top to the bottom. It's a little challenging, maybe we'll just go sideways. This is not how you would cut at home. Uh, you would cut across your body. But I'm gonna, it'll be easier to show you how to line it up here. So what I wanna do is I need to cut all the way across this. And ideally, I want to be able to have my ruler going all across as well. This is a little easier to manage when you're doing the three together, but it does work for the four as well. So what I'm doing is I'm lining my 45 
degree line up with the seam here. That'll ensure that this whole edge is nice and square when I square it up. Now also, you can see I've got some fabric sticking out beyond the edge of the ruler, and it's gonna be quite a bit beyond down here, but that's okay. We just wanna make sure that we are right on that 45 degree, and that we've got at least some fabric sticking out over there. All right, so now that I've got that lined up, I'm gonna be able to cut all the way across, and I'm gonna stand up and do this a little bit weird angle. This is not how I normally would do it, but this is so y'all can see on the camera. All right, we're gonna scoot that over. Now this one, since this edge is not square, I need to flip it around and square that up. So I'm gonna just flip that over. Now I'm gonna line it up with the side that I just cut. Uh, you can line the 45 degree up with this, just like you did before if you like. It's not super necessary because it should already be there, but mostly you just wanna make sure that the edge of your ruler is even with the edge that you just cut. And then I'm able to trim off this extra. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. We're gonna move that up so that way we can see it all. And we are just able to get what we need out of this one. All right, so you can see we really don't waste too much of that strip. Just that corner to start with and a little corner at the end but we we're able to get two really nice strips out of this. And this is gonna make a really pretty part to our row when we lay this all together. So make sure you're paying attention to your fabric requirements and your pattern because it will tell you how many fours you need, how many threes you need. Um, by fours, we mean one, two, three, and four. And some of them are just gonna have one, two, and three. And the others are gonna be going in the opposite direction as well we need to make that V that creates a little feather or book, whatever you want to interpret it as. All right, now we're gonna start sewing our rows together. It's pretty easy from here. I was able to do a row and add the sashing strip in about 12 minutes when I was working on it. So it really went very fast in terms of getting the actual quilt top together from here. All right, so I've already got these ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and join a three piece to a four piece. I'm gonna show you what that looks like on camera because it's a little different than sewing together your standard row. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm flipping this so that I'm gonna have a nice straight seam. And then I'm going to put the edge that's gonna go together with it. Now it's important to remember because I did this wrong so I'm sure some of you might too. You're always going to have a back quarter piece attaching to a background piece. So if you have this flipped and you're instead attaching it to another back quarter piece, it's backwards. So don't do that. All right, so just like before, when we wanted things to be a little bit offset, you want it to be a little bit offset here too. So here you can see, I've got my little points going out beyond. Now, again, if you have not done this before, I highly recommend you take some time, at least on the first couple, to go ahead and line up that quarter inch mark with the edge of your piece. And then that gives you a nice visual of where it should meet the other piece, both here when you're getting started and here at the end, but also if you've got that needle set up to sew a quarter inch seam, that needle is gonna hit right where this little valley is as well. It should be right in the middle. So you can just use that to eyeball it as well as you're going along. All right, so I've got my two rows sewn together that are gonna make that V. And what I need to do now is insert the fabric that we're using as a spine. This was the one that didn't end up in any bundle that's only available in the finishing kit and as yardage. And that is what's gonna create that spine of that feather or that book, whichever way you wanna interpret this design. And because we cut all these um, on the bias, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this skinny, strip here is going to be on my feed dogs because that is not going to pull and this might see how much give that has that will ensure that we end up with nice straight rows instead of that wonky rows if maybe something's off with your feed dogs 
And this is going to be in all cases and all sizes longer than your row here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it a little bit beyond and I'm just gonna stitch down. You don't have to pin this at this point, but we will pin it when we join our other row. Just like all my other seams, I'm gonna press this open. It is a little trickier because you have a lot of seams that are going in opposite directions of the one you're pressing right now. So you're gonna make sure you flatten that out with your fingers ahead of time, and then just lift and press your iron as you work your way down the seam. It's important to keep this nice and straight as you're going. You don't want it to see a curve. That's one of the reasons why I like to do the seam open is I feel like it's easier to keep it straight. Whereas when you're pressing that over, it's easy to just get this to kind of curve. And that's no good, especially when you want it to be nice and straight in the final quilt. We're gonna press everything from the right side as well, just to get it super flat, make sure everything's nice and straight. All right, so now it's time to join our row halves so that it makes that nice V, but it's a little tricky unless you know this trick. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that these seams are lined up on the same side here as they are in our row over here, but we've got our strip in between. So what you wanna do is take a marking tool that's gonna to go away with heat or water, or whatever it is you choose. I like these friction gel pens because they go away with heat. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up the tip of the ruler with where this little seam join is, because that's gonna be where it's gonna come together on the other side. And then I've got any inch line going down that center seam. And then I'm just gonna mark across. And this will tell me where I need to have that lined up with. And I'm gonna do that all the way down my strip. All right, so now I'm gonna line these up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball about a quarter inch away from the edge of the seam. And I'm going to put my pin in right through that line. And then I'm gonna eyeball about a quarter inch away from the edge of the seam and put it straight through this seam. Now I found that when I just then tipped my pin, I had a mess on the other side when I was starting to uh, sew it together. So what I started doing instead, so I didn't have to do two pins, is I just pinched it between my thumb and forefinger, and then I'm just removing this pin and putting it in sideways. That keeps the back nice and flat for when we go to sew this together, but it still keeps everything in place pretty well, um, so that way everything looks nice as you're working. So you're just gonna do that for every single time you had to draw one of those lines and that will help keep it close enough to where when you sew this together, the, the naked eye is not gonna be able to tell if you're off just a smidge, but it'll be, it'll be pretty stinking close. It'll look great when you sew it together and it will look very even and in line. All right, now when I sew this together again, I'm gonna sew with this strip against my feed dogs. So this side will be up. Again, that's because this is all on a bias, so I don't want that to stretch. I want it to be nice and straight, so I'm gonna sew with the straight edge piece against the feed dogs, then we'll press it open, and then our row is done. All right, so we've got our row together. It's looking pretty slick. I love how this just comes together. It looks like we cut all these, uh, I suppose they're, I don't remember, rhombuses. They're rhombuses. Uh, it looks like we cut that as a piece and then we sewed everything together, but we didn't. We strip pieced everything with that offset strip piece, cut it apart, sewed it back together was able to create this really cool design with this little stripe up the center. Looks like it could be books opening or a feather, hence the term fly away, because I feel like books can take you anywhere and out of your place into some more fun. Or uh, it also looks like a feather that you can fly away on as well. Now, when you're putting this together, some of them are gonna be going down this way, some of them will be going up. So just make sure you're paying attention to the layout diagram that goes with it and according to the size that you are making. But this is, I think, really fun. It went together really fast for me. So it is a real fun 
one. It's a great gift one because it can go together really fast. I think I'm gonna be doing some diagonal quilting lines. I haven't totally decided yet, but you could quilt this fairly easily on your home sewing machine with a walking foot as well. Even just doing straight lines would be pretty. And perfect gift for the reader in your life, that person who really enjoys a good book. They can snuggle up under this and read a book or, you know, listen to a book while they sew. That's typically what I'm doing. Uh, it's very rare that I actually have a physical book for me anyway in my hands. I read every night to my daughter. Um, but it is, I love this quilt. I, I really like how this one turned out. It's really, really fun. All right, so housekeeping. Stashing with Stephanie, join. You get lots of really awesome discounts on both the bundle that you're gonna get every month, plus you get first dibs on additional fabric that you get at 25% off. You get a free pattern inspired by it. So if you like this pattern and you join on your second purchase, you can get it for free. It's uh, The discount is automatic, both on the extra fabric and on the uh, pattern bundles. Also 30% off my two books. Back order workshop and my new one, which is doing really well on Amazon, but you can get a signed copy from us, and that's back order patchwork quilts. So check that out. It's packed full of back order friendly patterns. It gives you lots of ideas on ways you can bust that stash this year, and it really is just a lot of fun. Lots of stuff you can do with this, and really, I think really enjoyable. And a lot of people are really enjoying the club as well. Now I get emails about this every single month. So I'm gonna be really clear about it here. If you join today, you will not get this bundle. We've already emailed this out. There are kits available though of this if you really wanna make this kit. So join the club and then on your second purchase, it will recognize you as a subscriber. You can get the kit for 25% off. You can get all the patterns for free that are stashed with Stephanie patterns. Now, then your first bundle will come if you join by the end of the month, we will ship around the 20th of November. We are gonna try and get out maybe a little early next month because of all the craziness with Black Friday. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but if you join after the first of the month, your bundle will not ship until the 20th of the following month. So if you join November 1st, your bundle does not ship until December 20th. That's because we ship all the bundles at the same time of everyone who's ordered in the previous month. So everyone has the same chance of additional fabric. And because we do sell out sometimes and actually pretty frequently, we will sell out of this and we wanna make sure everyone has the same chance. And then also we like to release the fabric and the pattern all at the same time. So there's a little bit of delay, but you do get that instant gratification with the fabric discount and the pattern discount right away. So check that out. This pattern is called Fly Away. We've got kits and patterns while supplies last, and then you can always join Stash with Stephanie. All right, until next time, happy quilting. <music>